right, so listen, um, I don't know what is going on in the world these days, but I don't even understand why people wasted so much time in trying to keep Trump in office. That is the thing that is on my <laughs> mind today. Like, why are we so against change in this country? I've had to look at destinations outside of the U.S. because I didn't know what how this was going to play out. <laughs> That's so funny you mentioned that because I was thinking about going to Brazil like in a couple of months. And one of my friends was like, do you think... That's safe. And I said, literally, we're in the COVID epicenter of the world. Just leaving America makes me safer. It doesn't even matter where I go. And that's all thanks to Trump. So for me, I feel like <laughs> people, <laughs> Trump has made it anywhere but America is safe to go. And I, I think there was a recent place, I can't remember who it was, that designated that racism is actually like a mental health disorder now, legal, like I think legally speaking. And so they're all be. just, yeah, they're all mentally unwell. And so what a bunch of simple-minded people do it's never going to make sense to those of us who are using logic. And they're all... Well, I know one of, the, I said one of the biggest conversations online was that people were talking about moving to Georgia just to vote out those senators and put some new senators <laughs> in and then go move back to where they need to be. But I was thinking above and beyond that, you know, why, should, why not go back to Africa? You know, go back to Ghana. They had the whole year of the return. You know, that was the moment where Black Americans were going there and finding their roots and discovering or rediscovering for some people that, you know, you can live pretty well amongst your people that we ain't got to be in this country. I'll be mm -hmm. in Brazil. We, we can do this from Brazil with the green screen. Nah, the AIDS rate's too high there. Can't do it. JC, I'm not going to be sleeping with everybody. You know what? I can't. Sex I is inevitably going to be a part of your life wherever you are. And I, I mean, we're struggling to get COVID tests. I'm not going to struggle to do all types of other tests. Not happening. We but love you, Brazil. There, Jason speaks for himself. We love you, Brazil. But the people there are beautiful. Brazil, we love you. I'm definitely coming to visit. I won't be wearing any jewelry because y'all not about to chop off my arms, but I'm coming to your country oh my at God. some point. No, but seriously. Damn it, I, this. No, but seriously, I mean, look, I, I just think that, I mean, I love America a lot. And I mean, as I rediscover myself in this new America, because I've spent so much more time by myself and with myself, that I'm realizing that we 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 do live in a land of opportunity because clearly as a black mm -hmm. entrepreneur I've and a black employer and somebody who's gotten into tech and entertainment on my own I have figured it out but I do believe you know in talking to somebody earlier today that that it is a lot harder for people like us to get opportunities here um and that's a whole other conversation to unpack but you know what I'm really excited about is today's guest Kofi uh who we all knew from the grapefruit moments yes. uh and entanglement with Jada Pinkett on Girls Trip is here to talk about his new uh, his new company, his new movement. We're not kids anymore, and so it's it's good to see somebody who's been able to come, you know, into uh, adulthood as a young, positive black role model and a man who has overcome uh, being overweight and found his way of success in film and TV, and is also now you know getting into tech as an African American. I think it's dope. I think sick. he's dope. Yeah, I think this is going to be a great day <laughs> for all of our female viewers. And I'm happy he's to be dope? here representing you. You think he's dope because he's smart or because he has abs? Yes. So both. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so interesting is that with him in the movie Girls Trip, now that I think about it, he was in an entanglement with Jada Pinkett Smith. Mm -hmm. who he was the first manifest, one. Who manifest, no, he, he was the fake one. Then we had the real one pop off. And right, I fictional just, entanglement. I'm not going to bother him with asking what he thinks about all that, but I definitely got to bring up a Jada Pinkett joke. Like, have to. I mean, it's only right. I, I'm honestly a little jealous that he got to touch Jada like that. It's only been him and August that I know of outside of Will that got to put their uh, hands. Uh, uh, he did not touch her like that. It was a film. Now, you trying it. You pushing it. But no, I'm, no, I ain't saying like that. I'm just saying he got to touch her, period. You know, oh. I never even been around Jada. You know what I'm saying? That's like I, royalty right there. I'm jealous of the grapefruit. That had a great cameo in the movie. <laughs> Wait, now, so the grapefruit, if I, I can understand it, the grapefruit was put over his penis, right? While they Jason. Get, right? Isn't that right? You know what happened with the grapefruit. Man. Jason, you, yeah. you know what happened with the grapefruit. Kofi's one of the most attractive black celebrities that I know. So uh, I, I, I put black celebrity because that's, the, I mean, the black man, of course. Well, be clearly, careful, because earlier, before we went on air, you said Kofi's the perfect shade of chocolate. And Damon said, no, I'm the perfect shade of chocolate. So, ladies, we're going to have a chocolate standoff in this episode. It's going to be amazing. And I Me, Kofi, I promise you, I have a chocolate standoff. 
It's never a girl can dream. <laughs> I can dream. I, I think that you know you definitely blue are gonna have to show up for the women and hold them down and for the LGBTQI community because I added it on there for that nigga who said I was fat. Uh, the, I'm gonna show up for you and honor him as well. And damage will be. Damage is going to stay kick neutral. It I'm gonna just kick it with him. You know what I mean? Like I'm gonna kick it with him. I'm gonna pick his brain to see what what goes on in his world. I mean, I'm sure a lot of ladies been flying him out. I want to hear about that. You know, it's not too many male sex symbols out there. So I got to pick his brain, man. I got to figure out, uh, figure out which one of these females are flying Damage, guys out. You, I need to sign you up. Went, you and I are two male sex symbols. I just had a couple extra meals uh, with my plan. Okay. And you have less, but I'm, you know. No, I Wait hear you, Jason. And that's, and that's why for all three of us to be on one interview is powerful. You know what I mean? You you got the you got oh, light skin Jason. You got your, uh, you got Kofi, whatever color chocolate that is. You got me who's looking super red right now. So... Ladies, you get it all. And fellas. Right, Jason? Sorry. Yeah. And so we have the one and only uh, Kofi. I want to say Cerebo. Sir Did I get it right? Cerebo. Yeah, you said it right. You said it right. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I was telling Kofi before we got started that I'm, I'm really disappointed that this is the first time he's been on the show in four years. You man, know, it's the first time for everything. Come on, man. <laughs> trust, trust me. If anybody knows, it's me. Welcome to the show. Uh, Thank you. you know, you're, uh, I know your brother Kwame pretty well. I just saw him the other yeah. night at, at this little Come event. On. Word. That's my big bro. It's my big bro. He a wild one. <laughs> okay. So are you guys, are you guys similar? Okay. So for people that know Kwame, he's like best friends with Justin Combs. So he's in that party world. He's out. He's, he was actually the one person at this uh, event that I just went to the other day, dancing all over the place. Are you guys very similar or different? Man, we're 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 alike in so many ways, but like so different. Like I'm so much more uh shy than Kwame. Ever since I was young, Kwame was just he just got personality. He's just out there. He don't care what nobody thinks. He just he just he's the life of the party. And like, you know, I think we share that same uh connection for people, but I'm way more like I'm not dancing around the party. I I, I just not me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so so are you an introvert? Uh I guess like I hate I hate like the whole introvert extrovert because like some people would be like Kofi is not an introvert, but um I think I'm an introvert like like I said I love people I mean for for what I do it's impossible not to like people but like if you really ask me what I do on my spare time just I just I'm by myself in my head looking at pictures you know just just introverted introverted. I'm a Pisces though. That's like that's our nature. Like we known to be mass spacey, like on our own time in our own world. And I, I've always said I'm like a textbook Pisces man, mad cliche. Oh, yeah, mad that cliche. Explains a lot. Okay, that's interesting. You that say, I, you you? I, I I know a lot about astrology, and you being a Pisces explains so. It much. makes sense in a good way. In a good way, it all Word. makes sense. Yeah. What does it say? Because the last time we had somebody chocolate on the show that was a Pisces was Floyd Mayweather. You know, you was trying to hook up with him. So now what, that's crazy. What, what, I didn't even know Floyd was a Pisces. That's wild. He's a Pisces. So so blue. What does that mean? Tell me the. Uh, give me the reading. Uh, Pisces men are very charming and romantic, and they are known for wooing women very easily with tenderness. They're very mm -hmm. good at being tender to women. Mm. At least when they want something. When they, want they don't them, want something. Hey. It goes completely left when you hurt them, though. Uh, the wrath of God comes out. But when they like you, they like you a lot. They're very cuddly. It's true. It's true. It's true. Pis mm -hmm. I know Pis Pisces men. Pisces are good sound people. Like it. It uh, sounds like it. <laughs> yeah, Pisces are good people. There are two uh, signs that I don't date. I don't date Gemini's because I believe they were a delivery from hell, and I don't date Pisces. <gasps> mm -mm. Are you serious? Yeah, Pisces I'm with Jason so nice. on the Pisces thing. I'm with Jason. Mm -mm. Yeah, mm -mm. You know, Pisces. Pisces men are different from Pisces women, though. Damn it! So you and Jason are talking about two different. I ain't things. saying nothing about Kofi. I'm talking about the Pisces women, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kofi, I'm, I don't know woman. if you ever dated a Pisces woman, bro. I, but I, I know. Two Pisces, I don't really think that's the wave, man. I really don't. It's just like high emotion, like it's like, and like you said, I I, I don't think that's the wave. I personally, I don't have any great Pisces relationship stories, and naturally, <laughs> I always naturally naturally I always attract like more out outgoing women. You know what I'm saying? Like Leo or Scorpio, they just like Aries. Like Aries is like 
you know, that's all fire. But yeah, and Pisces, I don't know. I've I've met I've met some cool Pisces. Look, Rihanna's a Pisces and I think she dope. You know what I'm saying? So But she's an Aquarius Pisces. So there's other stuff the in there. I, I, no. I, I put it in no. the Pisces box, you know what I'm saying? So, Co- yeah. so Kofi, I heard that you, like me, were attracted to um, Rihanna. Now, I have to ask you a question. Have you ever met her in person? <laughs> See, this is the thing. Like, with Rhea, like, I feel like, I honestly feel like they took that and ran with it. Like, bruh, I was a little kid watching Rihanna at the Teen Choice Awards and Kids' Choice Awards. You know, like, like no, no pun intended. We're here to talk about we're not kids anymore. But, man, like, I don't even, it's not even like, oh, some, ooh, I like Rihanna. Like, yo, it's Rihanna, bro. Like, I've watched her right. from Umbrella to, like, deal with all kinds of shit in the public eye to, like, Fenty. Like, I'm a fan of, like, the woman. You know what I'm saying? For her to be mm-hmm. such a dope artist and then transition to a businesswoman and, like, it just, I, I fuck with her. Like, how could Have I not? Have you met her? And I haven't met her before. But I've had so many opportunities. Like, yo, Rhi's going to be at the, yo, you know, Rhi's mm-hmm. And I'm like, yo. Probably I I always like I'm like I'm not going today I'm I'm good like I I still don't even want to like meet her bro for real for real because you because no, you know that's wifey oh, no Kofi you know. listen Kofi yeah, listen to me <laughs> Kofi, Kofi listen listen to me I, and and What's this up? is coming from a gay man I've never What's said up? these words to a woman in the last twenty something years I told Rihanna if I was to if I was to want some wop it would be from you because I'm gonna tell you now not only is she sexy. She smells good. Her swag is crazy. It's Yo, I, did she meet gives- her too. I just remember I did meet her, bro, when I was like 13, bro. It was at the T- Teen Choice Awards, bro. It was like, I, that's the same day I met like Miley Cyrus. It was like, this was Hannah Montana days. Like, this was, this is like a good 10, 15, but. Yeah, I haven't met her no time, no time recently. But why don't you just shoot your shot? You're you're like America's uh, f- uh, popular chocolate bar. You could slide oh, in her yeah, DM. He I'm, I'm he such a great is, fan, yeah. bro. Like I love being a fan of Rihanna from afar. Like I don't want nothing from her. Like I feel like as soon as I try and like make that real on any level, it's like for what? Like as Rihanna, like I need somebody to like. You know what I'm saying? I need someone to put there. So like, yeah, she 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 plays that role well. Okay, so so next so next time next time I'm with Rihanna, I'm gonna call Kwame and then we're gonna three way you in. Oh, Kwame gonna talk shit about me. He's gonna be, oh, you don't even you don't even want me. What are you doing, bro? You don't even. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna try to link that up. Uh, so wait, so are you based in Los Angeles? Because I know you're Ghanaian, but where are you from? Uh, born and raised in Cali. Um, born and raised in LA, Ladera Heights. Um, I live in New Orleans. I moved to New Orleans like what four years ago when I started working on the show. I'm currently in New Orleans. I'm in a hotel right now, man. We're quarantining um, while we film season five. So uh, yeah, that's where I be at. And they wow. just and they just announced that Mardi Gras is canceled in New Orleans. So now you don't even get to enjoy Damn. that. As, as it, it better should. be canceled. Like, <laughs> it better it be canceled. Should. Like yeah, as it should. As it should. <laughs> But Blue, we could have had a masked Mardi Gras where we're in the streets throwing beads and masks around. Come, I mean, we got to live. Jason, I'm calling BS on this. I saw a beautiful meme today that put things in perspective. It said a couple of years ago, we were watching Bird Box and said, why would they leave, they leave the house knowing there's a pandemic? Right, right, right. And right. now two years later, we are Bird Box. Yo, that's So I do not trust you guys when it that's comes to that's Mardi Gras that's or masks that's or anything. I will say this, though, to just piggyback on the Rihanna conversation. I love how Kofi said that he wants to deify her as this thing on a pedestal and wants to leave her there um and you've mentioned things about women before in the past and so on behalf of black women everywhere thank you for being ahead (laughs) of the curve because before there was hashtag protect black women before jason discovered that hashtag Kofi, you were always (laughs) on the forefront of protecting black women before it was a trend and it's so sincere and there's like a list of like three of y'all who do that regularly so i just want to thank you for all the black women who are watching the show I appreciate that. Um, I'm also give me a kiss for that one, so I appreciate Aww. it. <laughs> he can, he can, but okay, but Rihanna likes pineapple, and <laughs> what? Oh my God, Jason. <laughs> hey man, you might have to just hit Riri. Tell her to hit me, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what it. I mean? Like you can protect black women and still lay them down. It, it it's not, not like her you're not. Dude, her last dude was like a prince or something, right? Like old boy was like he was like Saudi or something, right? He mm-hmm. has some extra Everybody. money, but one yeah. thing we know about one thing we know about Rihanna is you can have all the money and all the fame. She's looking for love, Kofi, and I've right, seen you right, in right. action. 
You know, right. I didn't know. I didn't know uh, the history, your history of acting. I mean, you've been doing commercials and acting since you were six years old. I came right. to know you, um, you know, from, well, Girl Strip became an infamous role that you played. Do you still yeah. hear, Grapefruit. do people still... Grapefruit, pineapple. I don't even know what fruit it was. I just remember. It was I just remember. I just remember. He, I just remember the entanglement he was in with Jada. I don't remember much else. Uh, I knew y'all. Jason. Yeah. So what was the question, huh? Well, hold on. I was having flashbacks from the scene. I see okay, the so I see him going. <laughs> I'm sitting up here. I'm sitting up here trying to focus right. on the question, but I'm like, there was a lot. Now you were like. One of the breakout stars in that movie who got a lot of people's attention did did what was the attention like after the film and do you still get that attention from women? Um, I mean that at that point specifically, just because our culture and you know how people are, that was a very uh, amplified moment. And uh, yeah, you know, I feel like I got love before and after Girls Trip, but I think that Girls Trip was a was a big moment. Like, you know, just off the topic of me, like, just like what they accomplished at the box office and just like seeing like Jada and Queen together and like seeing Jada like that. We haven't seen Jada like that in a minute. Like, yeah, it was just a big moment for everybody. But, yo, it was a huge moment for me to, to in a lot of ways, overwhelming. You know what I'm saying? Like, my life was changing so fast. Uh, Queen Sugar was still mad fresh and Girl Strip just came and hit like that shit hit and it was here for a long time. And to be honest, I don't think it's ever going to go anywhere. But yeah, man, I, I get love from the ladies and it's all it is. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I, I want to know, bro. I want to know, because, you know, as men, we go on Instagram, we sexualize women. We think they look good. Oh, we God. double tap <clears throat> a, as a male. What does it feel like to be sexualized in that way where women are going on your page, they putting hard eyes you know, you, their, their fantasy. How does that feel for you? I mean, on some real shit, bro, there's worse things in the world. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> it really is. But I definitely, like, have way more respect for women. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, like, this is me. Like, I know, look, I'm, y'all say I could keep it 100. Like, there's women who, like, you know, aren't even, like, traditionally pretty. But I realize, like, like the whole fame, just, like, concept, like, yo, the ugliest shorty in the world, like she still has to deal with the ugliest. <laughs> it just all kinds of just on her, just just pressing her all the time. You know what I'm saying? And like that that element of it, I I I really recognized it when uh, the fame shit started kicking in. I was like, yo, like I got mad respect for females, bro, in all aspects. Like yo, like I just never I never really understood it, but I I got to experience it firsthand, and I'm like, word, that shit different. But like I said, it's worse so things in the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Has a fan ever slid in your DM, you know, because of the grapefruit and left with the D? I mean, did she ah, ever, did you, did like you this, ever? Did she shoot a shot and make that shit? Yes. Is that what you had? Yeah, that's happened before, for sure. Oh, okay. No, I had a, I had a different question, though. But, like, let's be I'm not clear. mad. We're talking about DMs. I ain't say shit about the DMs. You saying, has somebody, you know what I mean? Like, has, yeah, like, has, like yeah, like, have, have you, like, it, connected absolutely was her shot wet fucking right like she wasn't shooting no brick like she was uh yeah i mean but yeah yeah that's happened before <laughs> now now my question was you ever been at an event and somebody was like a woman was touching you inappropriately too much absolutely. like she just felt like me yeah because she felt like oh it's kofi like i could put my hands on it yeah you know i'm saying they be the ones grabbing your booty and shit i'm like yo hold up like you you can't do that. Like, I can't do that to you, so you can't do that to me. Like, and then I just realized, like, I feel like, yo, I'm taking the slack for all the shit that men have done to women forever. I'm like, yo, I gotta just, like, I gotta take this. Like, this is, like, and not literally, you know what I'm saying? But, man, like I said, more, so much respect to women out here, because, like, yo, they deal with that shit on a daily basis, bro, and they not, not non-famous, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, shout out to women and men. Yeah, fix yourselves, dog. <laughs> I, I receive that on behalf of all women. And you mentioned something about physical autonomy and how a lot of times people think you're attractive. They think they can touch your body. Absolutely. Um, but when I think of your body, no disrespect, I'm going to keep this clean. Um, you Why you going to keep it clean? This is unlocked, uncensored. This is not essence. You just I, say, I was, say what I, you want to say. I, 
Okay, so what I was going to say is you are a very attractive man. Thank you. You have bro. a very nice body. I have mm-hmm. I have examined it thoroughly as research for the show. And um, I know that, <laughs> Jason, I'm just doing my job. It's called research. Okay? No, I'm having a I've flashback examined- from the fucking movie again. I'm trying to stay so, focused on our interview. You, you, you are someone who, when people see you, they blush a little bit because you're very, you're physically a great specimen. You're wonderful on the inside, I'm sure. You're beautiful on the inside. But on the outside, it's, yeah. it's quite a sight. And I know that you used to be a chubby kid. And as someone who's watching a certain somebody who's getting famous and losing lots of weight, um, potentially be a Tatiana, Jason, um, Mm. I'm wondering, how do you feel or what advice would you give to someone who has lost weight and is now, you know, enjoying a new body and newfound fame at the same time? I'm not asking on behalf of anybody on camera, perhaps. Listen, I lost lost 86 pounds and I'm going to go straight to fucking everything. I mean, I've already (laughs) had my whole days. How do you stay humble? (laughs) No, I've had had my whole days, but now that I be laying in bed and I feel the abs coming in, I know what's getting ready to happen. And OnlyFans era, like... Jason, the question was for Kofi. Kofi, help Jason stay humble nah, as he loses you. his weight. I hear you, Jason. You're not lying. I hear you. Demon time. I got you. Um, <laughs> shit. Um, I just got to remember what you asked. Honestly, How do you stay take humble? Take your time with it. Take your time with it. Like, for me, like, I don't sit there looking in the mirror like, ooh. Like, nah. Like, it was all about confidence for me. And I realized, like, how could I ever show anybody who I am internally or ever actually be able to tap into my own confidence if I'm not comfortable with myself. So really it was a journey of comfort, which turned into a journey of confidence, which turned into a journey of expression and uh, sharing. And I just feel like the more comfortable you are with yourself, the easier you're going to be able to share yourself with people and and you're going to be able to do it with ease, which is going to make it more receivable. Um, So it's a process. It's a journey. Don't rush it. And uh, yeah, like uh, I'll say what I'll I'll tell you. I'll tell you what Oprah told me. She said, uh, "Stay as humble as the day you were born." And uh, when you think about that, it's like you ain't no shit. <laughs> you ain't no. You ain't even know your name. So like, don't walk around. Like, yeah, I'm the yeah coat. Like, I'm I'm just out here, man, enjoying my well, life. You know what I'm saying? But you you were at 210 pounds. What was it that sparked uh, the idea in your mind to start losing weight. Yeah, I mean, you know, like what was it that made I mean, you, you were just, get motivated? You were just fucking around, but like on some on some young shit, I I was a young man. Like I wanted I wanted a you know I wanted to have sex. I wanted to have my I wanted to, I wanted a girlfriend. I wanted to like you know I was I was a young dude trying to like come into my own. So again, comfort, you know what I'm saying? Confidence is like I had to build that up. Like being young, I didn't I didn't I was always extremely like solid internally, but like especially in the field I'm in, everything is like you know physicality, external presentation. So I just really wanted to live, bro. So I was like, yo, it's time to take your life into your own hands and like create create the person you want to be, rather than just being like a victim to who I've been. You know what I'm saying? So it was a journey, mm-hmm. bro. No, I just wanted to know because when you glue when you when you did your glow up, was any of the chicks that was kind of passing on you before did he try to make a U turn? Once you got yourself together. <laughs> um, absolutely. But I can't even say it was like that because, like, I, I, nobody was really <laughs> passing on me. You know what I'm saying? It was some, oh, you wasn't I, shooting the shot. Exactly. Talk your shit. I, I, Talk I, I your was, shit, Kofi. I'm taking my time, you know what I'm saying? But I, I had, like, you know, I had my eyes on some things. And, it, you know, yeah, time caught up with me. Time caught up. But I know, but you seem like a really humble guy. You seem like a really humble guy. You don't ever ride by Red Lobster and look at her like, yeah, bitch, I'm on now. You Jason, know how do you know like, she works at Red Lobster, Jason? How do you know that? I mean, I don't know. I just ate at Red Lobster recently. Um, yeah. But I mean, do you, what, what, what keeps you humble? Is it your upbringing? Is it the comment oh, from Oprah? I mean, I'll say 100% God. And uh, I, I was introduced to God through my upbringing. So my parents, um, you know, we grew up Christian. I grew up in the church. You know, I can't say that I, I live in the church, but to this day, like the Bible and God and like my personal relationship with spirit, that's my only anchor. Like this, this famous shit, this human shit, <laughs> you could go that way, that way. You could go anywhere, any day. And like, man, I got shit coming from every direction. So yeah, the spirit, the spirit, the Bible, you know what I'm saying? And the word. And like, you know, there's days where I can't even get in my Bible, but even when I'm not in the Bible, like I'm just, my mind stays on like spirit, like God, like what, what are you using me for? Like, it's not about me. Like, I guess being a, you know, the middle child, being a little overweight as a kid, I I, I never, like, I just feel like a vessel, like coming to this place now, I'm just being used, bro, for real. So like, 
I just try my best to get out of the way. Like, <laughs> let him use me without me getting in the way of, like, you know, the expression that, you know, is happening through me type shit. <laughs> so we have a black man right now on the cover of People, Michael B. Jordan, who was... Uh, I that named- and my homie shot it, bro. Shout out to Josh, uh, Josh Kissy. Um, a so, fellow Kanye, you know what I'm saying? But he shot that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's people's people's sexiest man alive. Before that, we had John Legend. You were uh, 2016 Essence Sexiest Man Alive. Then 2017, you were included in the people's sexiest man alive. Do you do you uh, when when they're not talking about you in 2020 as a sexiest man alive, but you've already been the sexiest man alive? Does it does it matter any more or less when you were named that in terms of how you see yourself? Not at all, man. I can't even lie, bro. Even when that shit, 2017, I was like, me? I, I like, shit, cool. Like, you know, that year was like, that year was so crazy for me. I had zero expectations. I was just so grateful for everything. And uh, I, w- I went into that year with zero expectations, knowing girl shit was coming out, more so just trying to balance everything that was happening from Queen Sugar already, you know, which was a huge, like, shift in my life. That being said... Man, when the flowers come, I water them. When they're not here, I plant seeds. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not here to hoard bouquets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I'm just, I'm just enjoying. I'm enjoying life, baby. And shout oh, out, dude, to I, I, and shout out to Mike because that's a that's a good look. You know what I'm saying? And as long as it's one of us, yeah, you know I mean, representing, and he's solid. Yeah, <laughs> there's not a lot of um, men out there that women unanimously like, right? So you're in a position where you get tricked off. You're not the guy that needs to buy the Birkin bag. By the way, there gotta be. There's some girls who think I'm hideous. They gotta. Well, be. well I mean, not, I mean, I don't, I don't cares? know about, I don't know about women thinking you're hideous. I know you dated Ducky and that didn't work out. So I don't know where that relationship <laughs> here, here is now. Here comes Jason. Here comes Jason. No, I don't listen. I see Jace. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, you and Ducky. I've met her a couple of times. She seems My like girl. a spicy chick. She's fun. You guys didn't work out. Do you? Are you? Do you guys get along now? I was about to say, I don't know about it not working. That's my girl. I just spoke with her a few days ago. She's in London. Like, that's my girl for life. So, like, yeah, like, we was young. We had a a, a crazy experience. Personally, like, our lives were changing at the same time. And it was what it was supposed to be. And I think there's mutual mm-hmm. respect. You would have to talk to Ducky to get her side of that. But, oh, um, it's oh I'm going to I'm oh, gonna text her tonight and say, <laughs> you know, her, put your phone her, down. Her, I'm going to text her and say, Hershey was on our show today and he said great things about you. you. <laughs> nah, no, like, but Ducky's my girl for real. It's solid over there. That's but, good. you know, you said the word experience. I want to hear about the experiences because I feel like you, you're a dude that probably get tricked on a lot by women. Tricked on? That's a, that's yeah, a, I feel like he get flewed out. Like, talk about it. I want to hear a few oh, of these yeah, stories, yeah. man. I, I'm here. I, I would totally fly. I'm not, He's I'm not like, getting flew out. I'm here, out. bro. I, talk to I, me. He's getting flew out. out. I'm not I'm not, I'm not. going to dive too deep. No, that's some, yeah. Yeah, but nah. Uh, talk about it. <laughs> I'm not going to go too deep into to the, to the lovey-dovey shit, but yeah, when I say experience, I mean, I'll put it this way, man. Like I keep saying, 2017, my life was changing so fast. <laughs> there was nobody to relate to. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ducky was just her. She's from Australia, bro. And she's like out here in America being a fucking superstar. And uh, we connected. We connected on that level. And she's African as fuck, you know, and like. That's my girl. You know what I'm saying? That's one, one, thing, <laughs> one thing about both. So she was the one that tricked One thing about both of you, I mean, I haven't met you in person, but having known Ducky and seen her many times in person, you both have, I said this to the co-host before we start, you literally both have the best skin that I've ever seen. And That's her, man. Her skin is ridiculous. I'm like, yo, she just wakes up like that. It's crazy. Yeah. No, both both of you. I mean, it's just, do, do you... When people are talking about, you know, uh, being prideful in their blackness, you being African, um, you know, the way that you've carried yourself, the pride that you brought your family, the way that you've uh, shown up in your work and, and giving good work and and maintain a, a pretty good image in the public eye. Do you feel a lot of pressure to do that or is that just you being who you are? You know, how, how are you? How, how is that showing up? Is it showing up like you fully protecting it. yourself? Yo, that's a great question, man. Um, definitely pressure, but like the pressure comes from it being honest. You know, it's like when you when you know you're capable of doing something and you care about the people you're doing it for. There's a, I I want to do it right. You know what I'm saying? Like like Nip said, taking time to make proper use of my influence. You know what I'm saying? But 
that being said, that's what We're Not Kids Anymore is. Uh, these last five years have been a uh, pretty shout out. We're not kids anymore. Yeah, you know I mean, but um, these last five years have been crazy. Uh, the pandemic, this this COVID shit, allowed everybody to slow down and sit down and process, um, including myself. And um, I was able to really get back to um, older ideas that really were still relevant. And uh, We're Not Kids Anymore being one of them. I think right now with the protest and everything that was happening um, this year, I was like, yo, it's really time to uh, 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 stamp, you know, my place in this conversation and really create a space where our narrative is, 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 is coming from us. You know what I'm saying? From young people, from black people. And um, that's what we're not kids anymore. I always say it's the space between kids and adults, which I think I'm in right now. You know, when, when are you actually a kid? When are you actually an adult? Um, I'm a young adult, but like, you know, I go look at a 13 year old and I'm grown. I go talk to a 50 year old and I'm a kid. Um, so yeah, it's time to really explore, explore the conversations we need to move forward. And, um, I'm ready to do that, you know, and I'm in, in, in a way that's authentic to me, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so break that. So break down WKNA, which is we're not kids anymore. What exactly is it? And, and, and how are people using it or going to use it? So our phase one, we're launching a timeline. It's a virtual timeline, uh, pretty much breaking down the last 21 years, starting in the year 2000, 2000 to 2021. And um, you're going to be able to scroll on your phone, on the web. And um, it's 2005, YouTube created. I don't know when Hollywood Unlocked was created, but all right, 2013, yo, uh, uh, MapQuest. If you remember MapQuest, year 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, Twitter created 2009. Queen Sugar came out 2016. And it's just an experience. We have over um, a thousand facts, um, all curated, you know, facts that I went through there with my boy, Julian. Shout out to Ju, somebody working on the project with me. Um, and yeah, you know, it's all black excellence. It's cultural moments. We're talking about confessions. We're talking about everything that really shaped our generation. And really the goal is to like illuminate time, illuminate culture, take ownership of like what's actually shaped us. And, uh, you know, phase two, we want to start actually having conversations, uh, physical spaces, and really start talking about it. Just talking about these last 21 years and how we want to move forward and what that looks like. You know, I know the uh, there was a project that just dropped. It was called The uh, Social... What was it called? The, the Joint on Netflix. Dilemma. Oh, the Social, Social Dilemma, dilemma. yes. Yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that, that documentary uh, paints such a, a, a vivid picture of the landscape we're in right now due to the, the new world we live in. And I think it's time that we create tools to actually navigate this world and utilize the tools to our advantage, meaning the internet and technology, et cetera. So, yeah, that's, that's really what the space is. And um, it's going to grow. It's very fresh. We got merch. It's lifestyle. It's just uh, everything. Everything I believe in put into a space. Why did you choose the last 21 years and not go back further? Because there's a lot of black history that a lot of people aren't taught in school and none of us really learn about until we get Absolutely. older and through self-discovery. Why did you choose 21 years and not go all the way back? It was a creative choice, man. I feel like being a young person of this generation, we always, uh, the 90s, the 80s, like, yo, the 60s, it's, but like in 50, 60, 70 years, shit, in 20 years, it's the 2000s. Like the 2000s is a moment. It's a moment. And we were here for the moment. Like I wasn't here for the 90s. I was born in 94. Like this is my moment. This is our moment. We've watched the world change. Like we, we I went from don't get in a car with strangers to hopping in an Uber and calling an Uber for my mom to get in a car. I'm like, yo, I'm, I was born. I watched Twitter, but I was on MySpace coding like. I'm watching the world change and I'm a part of it. And that, and it's a part of me. It, it has so much to do with who I am as a person, as a man in this day and age. So I wanted to illuminate these 21 years, you know, and that doesn't mean we're not going to go back and have those conversations because we got here, you know, uh, through, through, through our history. But I just want to like take a second to really concentrate on our, our time. Like this has been our 21 years and it shaped us. And these last 21 years have a lot to do with how things are going to be going, moving, moving forward. You know, I'm a little bit taken aback. Um, just hearing you talk, you talk like an old soul, which is why I was taken aback when you mentioned that you were born in 1994, because I'm good at math. And that seems like you're only 26. <laughs> and, and even hearing you talk about we're not here and we're not kids anymore. Um, you're talking like a curator and a historian and a tastemaker and someone 
who's clearly focused on legacy and highlighting culture Absolutely. and all these themes that you usually hear from like people in their forties and upwards. Um, so you're, you're clearly, you've been here before. I'm just going to say that you've clearly been here before. As we all have. Uh, <laughs> which is why I think it's a little bit surprising to me that at only 26, you're already having conversations in the press repeatedly about how in two years you want to have kids and a family and like, why are you, you're moving so fast. Like, why do you want to settle down so early before you even hit 30? I would think a, a young Hollywood hotthrob would want to pull a George Clooney and, you know, <laughs> before the streets. He already been longer. flewed out 20, 30 times. Like, he did it all. <laughs> but Kobe's only 26. So you want a family in two years. Why is that? Nah, I don't, I don't know what, what quote that is you saw uh, specifically. I saw, I, I, that freaked me out, yeah. But I definitely, I definitely talk about kids and having a family. Again, um... I think the uh, misconception is that being young, that that you have time, like you have time to figure these things out. When I talk about wanting those things, I have to prepare myself and create those foundations now. So even just having those conversations in my mind, putting that energy out there, I still have a lot of like self-work to do. I'm still like developing independence. I'm still getting off these little creative bursts. Like I still got flights to catch. I still got situations to experience. But we know. I know where I'm headed. I know what I want. I don't want to get lost in like that chase and that exploration and just out here having fun with it. But it's like, what do you even like? What do you want? Like, what are you moving towards? And like, I could get so caught up in just playing around, but that becomes my habits. That becomes what I'm used to. And then like, when a good girl comes along, I'm not ready for. Her. I don't even have my shit together. And I and I personally don't have an excuse because I've had the privilege of having amazing parents who are still married and having a head start in life where I, I was, you know, able to get my mind right and make the moves and start to like, I, I don't, I, when you know better, you got to show better. Like I know, I know what it is. So it's a balance. It's a balance of like having fun and like taking my time, but also still moving in the direction I want. You know what I'm saying? So when you say we're not kids anymore, what would the 26 uh, year old Kofi tell the little kid Kofi that you know now? It's a great question, man. Great question. Hmm. There's no rush. Really enjoy your space. We talk about time a lot, but we overlook space. I always say they gave us time and took our space. Um, one of the main things I was able to purchase with my financial freedom was personal space. Like I got to spend more time with myself. I got to spend more time experiencing and exploring myself, taking flights by myself, like learning who I am without the pressure of society or work or et cetera. So if I could tell that little kid, like, yo, you got everything you need right now. You have space. Like, enjoy that. Like, really, like, enjoy that. Like, go somewhere. Do something. Like, dig inside yourself. Like, what do you like? What interests you? Where do you want to go when you do have money? Like, what what would you do? But, like, right now, you have something so valuable. You have space. And, like, that's that's what we, that's, that is money to me. That is money. See, I've me. said that, I've said wow. that so many times in our community, you know, we don't just get on a plane and go. You know, we don't look outside of our immediate environment to really explore how big and beautiful Word. the world is and learning Word. different cultures and foods and destinations. Um, what... You now with this new uh, platform that you're building, I don't know if people are listening to this. What I hear from you owning Hollywood Unlocked is that you're a black tech entrepreneur, you know, and what would you say to other African-Americans, other black people who, you know, are, are sitting around thinking we should have this, there should be this, they should be doing that when they could really just go and create it themselves? Be fearless, be fearless and be the change you want to see. That's where I'm at with it. Like we gotta support each other and we gotta expand what 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 we've normalized as our culture. You know, it's so normal for us to be these certain pockets of identities, but like shit, I'm an actor. Say I wanna make music and do tech and like create hotels and like and and, and scrub floors. Like there should be a, and look good and be fly and like rock my shit and be like, yeah, like I should be able to do that. Like I don't have to be like Mr. Humble and a power to the nah, like I should be able to be all of that. Like, why not? You know what I'm saying? And like, man, somebody gotta break down these doors. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have so many great examples of dope men, dope women, people who have been fearless and taking a piece of that and taking pieces of all of them and creating our, our own algorithms. And more than anything, like what, what I'm doing with the platform is celebrating those people. 
having conversations like with our platform, like Pharrell, uh, Tyler, you hear this. I want to hear about Pete, you know, like, yo, you started BBC and like all it. And now you got somebody like Tyler. I know me. And I was watching you. We were watching you. And now you got someone like Tyler who has golf. Let's talk about that. I want to know. I want to know everything. Like, yo, I know you guys talk in private. Like, yo, share that conversation. Like, Pete, tell us about the origins of you, like, creating BBC and ah, 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 and, like, Tyler. Like, when did you even, like, peep what Skateboard P was doing? And when did you start working on golf? And now you're Tyler, the creator. You're, <laughs> you're Pharrell. Let's talk about it. Let's share this conversation with some young people who could be inspired. And that's times 100. Let's talk about Oprah and Avra. I don't, how do we do that? I don't how do we do? How how you know, we bro, how do we do? I don't even know how they where it start. I'm just saying that it's endless, bro. These conversations are endless. It's but endless. how do we do that as a people where we build a community where there's a bridge between the Oprahs and the Hollywood Unlocks between spaces. the skateboard peas? How do we create that space? Spaces, spaces. We got to create those spaces. We got to we got to bridge those gaps and create those spaces. That's it. That's all we can do. And like those people are gonna. Once we create that space and once we give people an opportunity to tap in and then it's on them for tapping in or not tapping in, you know what I'm saying? But like, we can't keep talking about it unless we really create that space and intentionally and be very specific about what we're trying to get here. Like as a young person, again, one of my biggest things is that there's not a lot of public spaces where OGs could give us game. It's like, I get so much game from people in private and like, yo, you got 20 years on me, 15 years, 40 years. You're not seeing that. Online, it's like it's usually mad trivial. It's usually like all oh, these young kids with the internet, or they using and exploiting the young people for some cool shit. Like, rarely are you seeing OGs like, "Yo, this is what's ahead." Like, let me give you game. Like, get your money straight. Like, yo, pension plan. Like, you got woo. -woo. Like, I need you to woo woo. Your mental health, not nah, therapy, cool, but you need woo. Yo, you drink what? Woo. Like, yo, like, yo, give me game. Like, and let it be known. Like, mm -hmm. we can't afford to be hiding secrets. Like, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, yeah. <laughs> mentorship. The, what you're yeah, describing yeah. is called mentorship, and we do I, need I, more I, and, it, and it's hard. I was just about, was just about to it's ask to get him, it. who do you have a mentor? Because you sound extremely, uh, um, intelligence is not the word. You sound very, uh, I don't even want to say woke. I don't even know the right word. You, you sound like you know what the fuck word. you're talking about. He's thoughtful. He's very thoughtful. Uh, he sounds he, authentic. He, 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 authentic. Authentic. He know what the fuck he's talking about. That, that's words. what I want to say. Thank you. <laughs> who, who, You're all who, of the who, above, Kofi. Who's mentoring you? Like, are, or do you have a mentor? Or, do, or is this just all? I was about to say, I'm so blessed, man. Like, at the end of the day, Oprah is my boss. Ava is my boss. I work on set with Flex. everybody's like 20 years older than me. You know what I'm saying? I still have moms and pops. Like I'm surrounded by mentors, man. Surrounded by mentors. I, I couldn't even say there's one mentor other than the spirit that is like undeniably pedestal. But mentorship in it, it, as a whole, is just, it needs to be normalized and it needs to be, yeah. So yeah, I can't, I can't, I can't single out one person, but a lot of mentors, bro. A lot of mentors. So it took a village, basically. You're the perfect uh, yeah. prototype of what it looks like when a, a village pours into a black man and what happens. I think that's beautiful. Absolutely. Absolutely. But it doesn't happen all the time. So it's, it's a rare thing. I must um, say, yeah. I, really, I really, I worked hard to be who I am. Like, I wish. And that's part of that's part of the shit that I want. I wish I could tell these dudes, like, yo, like I woke up. Like, nah, bro. Like, I worked really hard to be like this and be like this means like yo just keeping my scope like just my like staying awake if you must but like that's a that's a 25 8 job like and it doesn't come slight like when you see everything like 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 James Bowen said he said uh to be slightly something in this world is to be in in rage all the time like pretty much when you woke <laughs> mm -hmm. everything is going to make you mad <laughs> everything up like yo we in america like yo y'all are evil like how am i supposed to wake up and smile knowing what you're doing like this shit is crazy but you gotta just yeah you gotta <laughs> and like if you really try to make a change create this space and initiate you know initiate what needs to what needs to what needs to happen so recently i was uh having a conversation with sergi baka about the uh in sars movement that was happening over in africa why do you think there's such a disconnect between black Americans with the Black Lives Matter movement and that Black Lives Matter and not translating over to what's happening in Africa. Yeah, I think that's the intention of America starting far back with slavery. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
they took us from Africa and and put us in this place that wasn't our, our own, took our language, took our, our family, like, you know, so I just think there's so many uh, uh, links that have been broken over history, over time. And like, there's just a there, lack of conversation. Like, we don't know each other. Like, I mean, we don't even know ourselves. I mean, I could say that personally, like, I'm still learning so much about this skin. So when you talk about Africans who been to America one time, they're not dealing with it the way we are. Even the the black people in, in, in London and in the UK, they're dealing with it in a different way. Like our experience in America is so unique, but then the world on a global level likes to black and we're going to go get them. And now you're black. We're going to get a Britain person, you black and you're black. And it's like, yo, like black is, <laughs> it's a, there's a, it's a huge umbrella. So I just think it's, there's more conversations to be had. We see it happening in the spaces that aren't head as like intellectual spaces, but you see it with music. You don't see black people rejecting Afro beats. <laughs> you, don't see, about it. you don't see Africans rejecting Music cures Afro all. That's because music cuts through all the bullshit. It's straight to the emotion. How could we not feel Afro beats? It's impossible. That's us. I just think that when we see something and we realize, oh, that's a space I can claim. And like, that's actually me. And there's actually a bridge to that connection. You're going to walk it. There's no bridge to who we are. Tell me the last time you saw a movie about a cool African. Right. Oh, wow. That's a great point. Tell me why we see Wakanda. Shout out to Black Panther. But how many times did they mention Africa? How many times was Africa illuminated in that film? Romanticized. We, we could see Jason Bourne running around Europe, flying all over the, the Big Ben. We in Wakanda, we an imaginary. We could, how many times was the word? The continent Africa mentioned. So as a young wow. kid, if I'm watching that movie, I'm gonna ask my mom to buy me a ticket to Wakanda. She can't. She can't, she can't take me to Wakanda. Like I want to go to Africa. So when you see those little, little but huge opportunities for us to actually connect the disconnection, they spent a hundred and something million dollars to, to share that story with us. I just wonder why Africa wasn't mm, Africa. Africa, Africa, Africa. Y'all, y'all, y'all hit the fuck out that Wakanda and shout out to, shout out to, you know what I'm saying? RIP Chad and all of that. That's no disrespect to what we did and what we, how, what, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But like, let's go. It's like, we, if you really want to have a conversation, let's go. <laughs> like, I, I, let's I love, about. I love how passionate you are and what I love and what I, cause I feel what you're saying. I don't just hear you. I feel I what it. you're saying. Yeah, and, definitely. and, and I was on this app today that I'm now addicted to called Clubhouse. This is the I came to believe somebody told me oh, to God, download Jason it. Found oh, Jason oh, found it. Gotta leave Clubhouse he found it. You're on there. No, you I'm, on Clubhouse. I'm on Clubhouse. Clubhouse. He found it. No, no, no. Oh, Kofi, I'm a, to Kofi, I'm going to DM you the only invite I have. I'm going to send it to you. Let me tell you. I have four invites. I'm not handing them out to there, nobody. There are intellectual conversations going on in there, but one I heard today in particular when I was getting up this morning, I, I literally roll over now and I'm in the clubhouse. They were actually, oh, there was a, there was, oh, an, a, there was an African <laughs> who lived in London, who was born and raised in London, but he's African. And he was saying to the black Americans on the app today, he was like, we didn't grow up being told about our ancestors, like uh, told about, uh, you know, uh, what we could or couldn't do, what limitations existed in our country because of our skin, racism and all the things that you all have experienced. So for right, us, right. we were always raised and told that we were valuable and that we were from kings and queens, not not whereas you were raised talking about you were from slaves. Now, you being Ghanaian, I've met your president before, and I know about the uh, the whole return the whole return to Ghana uh, program that he had put together. And I went to a meeting in D.C. where I learned a lot about Africa that even I didn't know. Do, did your parents instill in you, being that they're African, the 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 pride and the value and that that, that passion that we just got? My parents did such a good job at trying to give me everything that they could. But they work. They're they're they are they, as African as they are, they are Black Americans in this in this same society. They work. I didn't get to go back home till after Queen Sugar. I never stepped oh, foot wow. in Africa until 2016. The same year I made enough money to go back to Africa, I did, and my whole family went with me. You know what I'm saying? That being said, in an ideal world, I would have been there ten years earlier. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I would have been there ten times by the time the first time I went there. So. That's not a knock to my parents. It's just the again the reality, the transparency of the fact that they they I, I eat the food. I, I they spoke the language to me. Do I know the language? No, uh, and that sucks because when I went back home, 
to sit there with my grandma. I got to smile and, and hug you, but I can't even run it with you. I just want to talk. I can't even talk with you. It's like, yeah. oh, grandma, uh, uh, like, been so long. All right, you 88. Like, all right, damn, like, I know English. I'm sorry. That's all I got for you, grandma, is English. Mm. Like, I love you. You know what that means, grandma? I love you. Like, fuck. You know what I'm saying? So they came to America for a better life. Like, I'm their, sea, a lot of immigrants. Yeah. I'm their sea living the American dream, trying to, you know what I'm saying, get it so I could take it back home. You know what I'm saying? So we went back home. But that is like, for what? For a trip? For vacation? Like, now I'm like, what the but, fuck? But, it, but, it, but it's good. You are living true to what the president is trying to do there to get Absolutely. more black Americans to come back to Ghana and to reinvest. It's just bridging the gap, bro. Like I said, 2016, it wasn't nobody there, bro. By 2000. 19, 20, like, yo, it was it was lit. It was a whole party. You know what I'm saying? So The year I, of the return. The year that was a big return. thing. And that, that was really beautiful, too. And to answer the question you asked earlier about when's the last time uh, Africa was made cool in a blatant way rather than just being implied that with part. Wakanda, honestly, I think for me, it was like the 80s and 90s. It was that whole Afrocentric mm -hmm. time that we had with Remember the Time yep. and Coming to America and the cross yep. colors and people wearing Africa around America. their necks. Uh, yeah. yeah, right. Like there was, the, there was the eighties and nineties were a masterpiece of Afrocentric like adoration, yeah. and I think that's probably why now, now that I'm thinking about it, people who are in your age bracket, that's probably why you guys romanticize the nineties so much. It's probably the last time you could see yourself clearly before Absolutely. the two thousands came along. But what about what? But what about, about the that. contribution Beyonce just did, and she got criticized? Did a whole album with Afro Afro beats and artists from Africa, and the gift. The, the what about that? You're I think right, it's, Jason. Hard. Wow, it's hard. Right. It's hard for people like B because like she's B. You know what I'm saying? Like Oprah can never do enough. Beyonce does too much. It's like, what do you want? You know what I'm saying? Like these people out here representing, they doing the best they can. Like, I mean, again, she's creating that bridge by just illuminating that culture. Like she, by no means, in my opinion, was like trying to take ownership or disrail people. For if anything, she's just like, yo, I fuck with this. This is dope. Like tap in. Like, yo, black is king. Like, how could you be mad at that? <laughs> you know? So, so Kofi, I want to ask you one more question before you get out of here. And then I want to end on uh, uh, we are not kids. We're not kids anymore. When you look back over the last four years with Donald Trump and just all the experiences with racism surfacing the way that it has in the last four years and the, the treatment of black people, the continuum of treatment of black people by the police, what is what has been your thoughts on all of that? It's fucked up and it's time for it to change. So that's what time it is. Simply, you know, I could say a lot. I've been saying a lot, but you said I could cuss on here. So it's fucked up and it's time for it to change. And I'm glad I'm glad Donald is out out of the office. We good on him. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So yeah. so we're not kids anymore. Um, is it available now? Is it going to be available soon? Black Friday, baby. Black Friday. Hey. November 27th. Hey. November 27th. Okay, and the other thing is, I really enjoyed talking to you. Don't be a stranger. Like you should have been wow. here, and now that you've been here, you have to come back because, like, I'm I feel here. like we we had to have our first interview catching up on a lot of shit we probably didn't even need to talk about. Right. But now that we got that out the way, you know, moving forward, I, I definitely want to stay connected. Absolutely, man. All of y'all, come are back. Dope. Even via like this little virtual thing, I could feel all of y'all energy, man, and I really appreciate the space for real. Real, yeah, real. but the next time we interview is going to be in person. You don't have to have a shirt on, and Blue can squirt you with baby oil just so that way <laughs> our female fans can appreciate all it's of the knowledge and beauty. Ruthless. He's ruthless. It's my Jay job. My it's job. my job. If I have to do it, I'll have to do it. It's part of my it's job. So much love, man. And DJ, bro, for real. You a real one, man. I appreciate y'all, for real, for real. We got to yeah, do it come again. Back. I'll do it again. Yeah. Yeah, come back anytime. Stay safe out there, man. And, and we just pray for just continued success, and uh, we appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you, man. Much love, y'all. I'm Ollie. Of course. All right, look, that was a great show. And make sure you keep coming back because we got all types of amazing interviews and topics that are going to make you go crazy. Uh-huh, that's right. That means like, subscribe, do everything you need to do to make sure you stay up to date with what we got going on. And ladies, stay tuned in because you know I have your back. And listen, make sure that you're commenting below because even though I say I don't read it on the show, that's all I do when it's over. Peace. Mm -hmm.